The Whistler. Sit back and enjoy another strange story by The Whistler. I know many things, for I walk by night. I know many strange tales hidden in the hearts of men and women who have stepped into the shadows. Yes, I know the nameless terrors of which they dare not speak. And now for the Whistler's strange story, The House on Hainsley Boulevard. The old Hackett place on Hainsley Boulevard was a monument to the past, built by the very first of the Hacketts to arrive in California a good many years before. It clung now to its former grandeur with a sort of quiet, determined tenacity. But one evening shortly after midnight, the quiet of the neighborhood was suddenly shattered, the air torn with a startling cry... Fire! Yes, the cry of fire knifing through the stillness of tree-lined Hainsley Boulevard. The old house threatened as flames leaped to envelop it, and immediately the street was alive with activity. And miraculously, coming swiftly to the rescue, a fire engine, its crew working skillfully, fighting off the threat of destruction. And then out of the crowd, a man appeared. Oh, Mr. Hackett, the house is safe. Yeah, I see. No one in there, is there, Mr. Hackett? Your Aunt Leona away? Oh, she's away, thank heaven. Spending the night in Glendale. How did it happen, Lieutenant Mullen? How did you start? I don't know. I went past about half an hour ago, going on duty. I know. Uh, Aunt Leona will be grateful to you, Lieutenant. Oh, forget it. Funny thing, though, Mr. Hackett. thought I saw somebody running away from the place. What? Yeah, that's right. Well, I'll see you later, Mr. Hackett. Sure. And thanks, Mullen. I'd have been sick if anything had happened to the old place. You are sick inside, aren't you, Frank? because your plan failed so completely. And even as you thank Police Lieutenant Mullen for his swift action, you inwardly curse yourself, forgetting that he passes this way regularly, and that only a matter of a half an hour destroyed your timing. And you have to have money soon. $5,000 to clear your gambling debt with Dino De Costa, or the payoff will be your life. Even with the damage very slight, the scene with Aunt Leona the next morning is an unpleasant one as she surveys the scorched section at the rear of the old place. Disgraceful. Oh, there's very little damage, Aunt Leona. It isn't the extent of the damage. It's your carelessness that disturbs me. Hmm. I've left you everything I have in my will, and all I ask in return is that you assume some responsibility and make things easier for me while I'm still here. Look, Aunt Leona, it could have been much worse. You worry yourself sick over this house. It's my home, isn't it? It's my home, too, Aunt Leona. Half mine, half yours, according to Kathy's will. And it'll be all yours when I die, along with everything else I have. But I'm not dead yet, Frank. Just the same we ought to accept Mr. Fleming's offer to buy, if you ask me. No one's asking you. The old argument sounds even more hollow than usual, doesn't it, Frank? You're not getting anywhere with Aunt Leona. And you wish she were out of your way. You can't help thinking how pleasant your situation would be if something happened to her. You'd have everything you wanted. You could square yourself with Dino and have all you'd ever need besides. And there isn't much time, is there, Frank? Dino's given you ten days. You can't stall much longer. Later that day, you seek out the only solace these last few months have offered. Adele Richards. Lovely. Beautiful. You could marry her if you could support her. Couldn't you, Frank? She's a stubborn old woman. Fleming's outfit has bought up most of the other houses along the street, but she won't sell. 
Going to put up an office building eventually. Probably want to sell that. Sure, sure, when it's too late. Uh, old Cappy had the right idea. Cappy? Captain Hackett, Matt Leona's husband. Oh. He up and left about eight years ago. Went out one night for some pipe tobacco. And so he said. Never came back. I don't blame him. But then he had some money. He could afford to run. I can't. You want to run, Frank? From her and from that infernal old house, yes. From you, darling, never. <laughs> oh, Frank. Oh, great. Don't answer it. Silly, I have to. Oh. Hello? Oh, yes. Oh, yes, he's here. I'll call him. It's for you, Brad. Hmm? It's been at a cost. He knows you're here. Uh, okay. Hello, Dino. I thought I might catch you with your girlfriends. I was reading the papers, Frank. That was a dumb thing to do. What was? Setting fire to your house. You're nuts. No. No, Dino, you're wrong. I didn't do Sure it. you did, and it didn't work. Just wanted you to know. That's a bum angle, Frank. I don't like it. What difference does it make to you what I do to settle with you? I don't like strings on anything that's mine. That five grand you owe me. I want it on time, but I want it clean. Remember that, Frank. Hello? Hello? Frank, what is it? Nothing. Frank! I'm... I'm sorry, honey. I've got a lot on my mind. Something to do with gambling and being a decoster, that's obvious. What is it? It's... Well, might as well know. I'm in the Dino for $5,000. I've got to get hold of the money some way. Well, Frank, why don't you go to your aunt? Tell her everything. She'll, She'll able... blow her stack. You don't know Aunt Leona Adele. If I did that, she'd cut me out of her will, everything. No, I'll have to get the money for Dino some other way. Yes, Frank, some other way. And the time is short, very short. It's ironic, isn't it? All Hackett House isn't worth much to anybody except Aunt Leona and Mr. Fleming, who wants very much to buy it. You could settle your debt with Dino if she'd agree to take Mr. Fleming's offer. That night after Leona retires, you're groping for a solution when the phone rings. Hello. Mr. Hackett, uh, John Fleming. Oh, oh yes, Mr. Fleming. Hope it's not too late to bother you, but about the house. Have you talked it out with your aunt? Why, no. That is, I have talked to her, Mr. Fleming, and... Well, she's weakening, but... Nothing definite yet, though. Nothing settled, eh? Well, no. Well, you know how it is. Living there so long, she's pretty attached to the place. I know, but we can't stall this thing indefinitely. I wish you'd get a decision soon. Oh, I will, sir. Very soon. And it's going to be a favorable one, I'm sure. She is weakening. Good. We'll talk again soon, then, eh? <laughs> You wish it were true, don't you, Frank? But there was even a slight sign of Aunt Leona weakening in her stand against selling the house. The next morning, you decide to bring the subject up once more. When, as you step out into the yard, you hear voices raised angrily. Aunt Leona's voice, and the voice of old Bozen Pete, an old friend, former shipmate of Captain Hackett who now does odd jobs about the place. This mess, my rose bed, my favorite rose bed. And what did you do? Neglect it? Ignore it? Oh, the soil's been worked to death there, Miss Haggett. Best thing to do is rip all them prickly old scrags out of there. Don't you dare talk that way about my roses. Your roses, your house. If you ever think anything of anybody else's, like my patience, it wears my thin around you, Miss... I want to tell you right here. Now, look here, Bosom. If you don't enjoy the way I do things, you don't have to stay around, you know. All right. I will quit, and with pleasure. Goodbye to you, Miss Leone. Oh, 
pool. Aunt Leona. Oh, Frank. Well, I suppose you heard. Who didn't? Well, the neighbors must have heard you, too. Aunt Leona, you can't send that old gent away. Can't I? Cap Hackett said he was to have a place here as long as he wished it. Captain Hackett's been gone over seven years, Frank. I'd say that makes him legally dead. And dead people don't dictate to me. Nor life one either. Something in Aunt Leona's manner has suddenly set you to wondering. Wondering if the rose bed might hold a grim secret of your aunt. Perhaps even the secret of her husband's strange disappearance. And you determine to find out. At dinner that night, you ask her an important question. Uh, this weekend, Aunt Leona, going to Glendale as usual? Cousin Ellie? Hmm, thought I might. Why? Well, nothing. Just wondered. Oh. If I do go, I hope I can trust you to remain in the premises and look after the place better than last time. Oh, of course you can, Aunt Leona. I'll look after the place. Very well this time. And now back to the whistler. It's a hunch, isn't it, Frank? A growing belief. And quite possibly something that will help you considerably in your contest with Aunt Leona. It's far more than a test of individual wills, isn't it, Frank? The days are slipping by, and Dino da Costa will collect your gambling debt with him one way or another. And now with your aunt spending the weekend in Glendale, giving you some time alone on the premises, another more promising thought has entered your head. That's why you set to work as soon as she's gone. Set to work digging into the rose bed. Digging deep. But all your efforts avail you exactly nothing. Only a ruined flower bed. And at work the following Monday, you get the angry phone call you expected. Frank? Frank, how could you? How could you allow that terrible man to take his revenge this way? Uh Terrible, terrible man? Both and Pete. He's dug up my rose bed, ruined it for good, and you let him do it, you, when you said you'd watch the place. Well, I'm sorry, Aunt Leona. I only left for a short time. I had no idea that Bosun would do such a thing. I'm going to get the police on him. Lieutenant Mullen. I'll report him to Lieutenant Mullen. <laughs> That evening, as you sit on the front porch of Hackett House with Aunt Leona, you're a little hesitant to bring up the matter of Mr. Fleming's offer, aren't you, Frank? Yes, because you know she's still upset about the rose bed. You're sitting back, puffing on a cigarette, trying to think of some way you could ease into the subject when... Someone's coming up the path, Frank. Hmm? Oh, Yeah. Looks like Bosun. Bosun? Well, well, I've got something to say to him. Now, now, take it easy, Aunt Leona. I say from the looks of that walk, he's had a few beers. Yeah, hello, Frank. Miss Leone. Well, you have a nerve coming back, showing your face around here after what you've done. What? What are you talking about? I'm talking about your tearing up my rose beds. Me? I didn't have nothing to do with them rose beds. I just come from my money. Your money? What money? You know what money. Long before Cappy went away, he said I should have part of his money when he died. Oh? Did he tell you that? He told you too, and you know it. Really? Huh. I don't seem to recall. Listen, Miss Leone, I'm warning you. I better get my money or you'll be sorry. Are you threatening me? Well, call her what you want. I'll get my money if I have to choke it out of you. Come on, Bosun. 
Let's take a walk. Don't let go, Frank. I ain't finished here yet. Yes, you are. Yeah. Come on. You lead him away, Frank, to Bozen's shouting threats. Walk him down the street for several blocks to calm him down. Then you leave him. You feel sorry for the Bozen, don't you? But as you turn, start back for the house. He's quickly forgotten. You have other things in your mind. Dino, Aunt Leona, Adele. You haven't seen her in days, have you? Then as you reach the crest of the hill, sight Hackett House silhouetted against the sky, you stop. Suddenly an idea hits you. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Sure. Why didn't I think of that before? And Leona! And Leona? In the kitchen, Frank. Oh. I was fixing a cup of tea. Would you care No, for no, one? thanks. Look, I just got an idea, Aunt Leona. Cappy left you several lots up in Glendale, didn't he? Not far from Cousin Ellie's place? Yes, that's right. Aunt Leona, why couldn't we have the house move there? Just have it picked up, hauled away. Move? To the lots in Glendale. Why not, Aunt Leona? Why not? Why not, indeed? Hmm. It'd be nice being close to Ellie. Sure, sure it would. But wait, wouldn't it cost a bit of money? Oh, I don't know. Look, let me talk to Fleming. Now, don't rush me into this, Frank. I want some time to think it over. Okay. Okay, you think it over. But I've got another idea. And I'm going to see Fleming about it first thing in the morning. Aunt Leona, I talked to Mr. Fleming this morning, and he called me back a few minutes ago. His company is willing to move the house for us, stand all the expense. Oh, really, Frank? How about it? Do I tell him it's a deal? Well, all right, Frank. All right. Good. Now, listen, they're anxious to get on this thing right away, so you'd better scout around, see if you can find us another place to live for the time being. There's a cottage just down the corner from here and up the street. It's for rent. I saw it this morning. Check on it right away. I'll see you tonight, Aunt Leona. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Hello? Hello, darling. Frank, where on earth have you been? Well, it's a long story, but I'll be... You're through talking, Frank. Well, go on, darling. But you'll fall. I'll... You hear me? Hang up. I'll call you later, Adele. But, Frank... Later, Adele. All right. What's the idea, Dino? I came to call. That's the idea. Was in your neighborhood, as the saying goes, and decided to drop in. You're not the social type, Dino. No, I ain't. So we won't visit very long. Five more days, Frank. Or are you keeping score, too? I know. And it looks good, Dino. I'm not so sure. Five days, Frank. That's all the time you got. I need to do myself bad. Five days. It's got to be. I'll try, Dino, but I, I can't... I'd do that, Frank, if I were you. Just as if your life depended on it. Dino means business, doesn't he, Frank? Five more days and that's all. Somehow you manage to move yourself and Aunt Leona to the little cottage not far from Hackett House in two days' time. And then you go to Mr. Fleming's office to press for payment for your property. So any time your company wants to start moving the house is fine with us. Good, my boy, good. I'll file for the moving permit right away. Sometimes there are little delays in getting it and sometimes not. But we'll move the house as soon as we get the permit. <laughs> well, as a matter of fact, Mr. Fleming... When you move the house is of no importance to me. I don't even want to hear about Hackett House until it's safely planted on those lots in Glendale. I'm, well, about the money for the property. Since Aunt Leon and I own the property jointly, can we each receive a check for half the total amount? Perfectly agreeable with us, and I should say... If there's some rush about it, our accounting department could get the checks out for you right away. Oh, fine, Mr. Fleming, fine. There is some rush about it.
It's a relief, isn't it, Frank? You leave Fleming's office fortified with two checks. One made out to Aunt Leona for her half. The other to you for exactly the amount you must pay Dino da Costa. $5,000, your half. All for Dino. You're glad you have the money for Dino. But after you pay him, you'll be no better off than you were before. And now you know you'll never be. Unless something happens to your Aunt Leona. As you walk along the busy downtown street, you suddenly see an old friend right in front of you. Well, Bolson, how are you? Oh, hello, Frank. Well, look, I've been wanting to get in touch with you. I, I wanted to, well, ask Miss Leone to forgive me for the other night. Oh, forget it. I didn't mean to say all those things, but, well, I kind of needed the money. Oh? Things pretty tough? Yeah, pretty tough. Well, I'll see what I can do, Bosun. Oh, would you, Frank? You know I didn't mean to harm her or nothing like Where that. Where are you staying? A Siemens Hotel. I'll get in touch. You watch Bosun as he turns away, disappears into the noonday crowd. Now you know what you're going to do, don't you, Frank? The Bosun is your answer. Soon you'll have everything you want, including a dad. Yes. Bozen Pete has given the solution, hasn't he? That night, a little after midnight, you make it a point to run into another old friend, Lieutenant Mullen of the police department, on his way to work. And as the two of you stand and chat on the street corner, you manage to steer the conversation in the direction you want it to go. Yeah, I was beginning to wonder about Bozen. Haven't seen him in the neighborhood for some time. Well, he's living downtown now, I understand. Uh, heard he had a run-in with your aunt, is that right? About the rose bed? Yeah. What a session it was. He'd been drinking. Well, I really don't think he meant what he said. Threatening her, you know. Really? Still, you can't be too sure. He's got quite a temper. And a gun. Mm, I didn't know that. Yeah. But I... I don't think you have to worry too much about the bosun. Oh, here comes my street car. I'll see you later, Mr. Hackett. Good night. Night, Lieutenant. You're pleased, aren't you, Frank? Satisfied with your meeting with Lieutenant Mullen. The following afternoon, you phone the Siemens Hotel, ask Bozen to pick you up that night, drive you out to the cottage. You've made a decision, haven't you, Frank? Set your plan into motion. Your debt with Dino will be settled. And when it's all over, you won't have to share the money from the sale of Hackett House with anyone. And you'll have all your Aunt Leona's money besides. Late that night, you're waiting on a quiet side street for Bozen to pick you up. And finally, he rounds the corner and pulls up at the curb. Hello, Frank. Right on time, Bozen. Yeah. Shouldn't want to keep Leona waiting, you know. Sure she'll be up this late? Seems like a funny time of night. Oh, you're wrong, Boston. The time's perfect. Just perfect for... <laughs> Ten minutes later, you're parked in front of the cottage, and you're wearing Boson's pea jacket and cap. Boson is out of sight, slumped down on the seat beside you, still unconscious. You glance at your watch, then slip out of the car and hurry quietly up to the porch of the cottage to wait. It'll all be over soon, won't it, Frank? Once you get away, you'll wreck the car. Bozen will be killed. And the murder weapon will be found in his pocket. You glance at your watch again, a little after twelve, and down the street. And you see him approaching right on schedule. It's Lieutenant Mullen. Yes? It's Frank. Well, Frank, did you forget your key? What in the world are you doing in the bosun's cap? What? As your Aunt Leona slumps to the floor, you whirl. Run back to the car. Jump inside. Through the rearview mirror, you can see Lieutenant Mullen running towards you. And as you put the car in gear, you let the bosun's cap fall to the street. 
Bye-bye, Lieutenant. And thanks. Thanks for being right on time. Whistler will return in just a moment with the strange ending to tonight's story. A crowd had gathered in the usually quiet side street on the fringe of downtown Los Angeles. Smoke and excited whispers stared at the body on the sidewalk. A few feet away, Lieutenant Mullen stood by, puffing slowly on a cigarette, and his face wore a puzzled frown. Then another officer pushed his way through the crowd and joined him. Uh, this one dead, Lieutenant? Yeah. Name is Frank Hackett. He killed your lady back there at the cottage? Uh-huh. Tried to make it look like Boson did it. Boson? The man oh, over there in the Essex. How's he doing? Oh, he's finally coming around. Uh, how'd you nail this Hackett fellow? Saw him run out of the cottage his aunt had rented after I heard the shots. Thought at first it was Boson the way he was dressed. I took off after him. I never caught him either, except that after he turned the corner, he had to abandon the car and go out on foot. That's when my bullet nailed him. Something go wrong with his car? No, the street was blocked. Blocked? Yeah. The movers were hauling a house away. They blocked the whole street. Hackett here couldn't drive the car around it. Funny thing, too. It was his home they were moving. Hackett House. Let that whistle be your signal for the whistler each Sunday night at the same time. Tonight's story were Bill Foreman, John Stevenson, Norma Varden, Gene Bates, Cliff Arquette, Herbert Rawlinson, Frank Richards, and Charles Field. The Whistler was produced and directed by George W. Allen, with story by Adrian John Doe, music by Wilbur Hatch. Remember to tune in at the same time next Sunday to bring you another strange story by The Whistler. Marvin Miller speaking. This is CBS, the Columbia Broadcasting System.